Uh, the name of the panel is Gender and Engineering, the Developing Action to Encourage Women in Tech. And we are going to discuss why there is a lack of women in the field of engineering and how some companies and communities of technological women are working to change this paradigm. Uh, let me introduce my, by myself. I'm Ariel Martinez. I am a computer engineer. Uh, I'm from Spain, but now I'm living in New York. Um, I'm a tech and lady organizer. This is a group uh, where we try to encourage women in the STEM fields. Um, I want to moderate this room table, this panel, with Alicia Martin. And now uh, I would like to, the panelists introduce by yourself because you can explain better <laughs> who you are <laughs> to people. Thank you for having me. I am Cristina Aranda. I am PhD in linguistics and master in internet business. And uh, I am chief marketing officer at Intelligence. It's the best company of the software of the world. We are in Madrid and in, in San Francisco. And also I am co-founder of Mujeres Tech to empower girls and women in digital sector and get more men allies uh, to change the world. Hello, I am Alicia Garcia Olgado. I am computer engineer and PhD student of the University of Salamanca. I'm part of a research group, uh, the name is Grial. And I organizer of the Google Developer Group Salamanca and Women Tech Maker Lead. And I'm part of the project uh, created by Marielle Tech and Ladies. I'm Talia Gershon. I'm a manager at IBM Research in New York. Um, and I lead a team of uh, software engineers and designers. Uh, some of the team is actually based here in Tenerife, so it's good to see them here. Um, and we focus on quantum computing and AI technologies. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Micah Hill, and I'm the founder of the San Francisco International Women Entrepreneurs uh, Forum. I'm also the co-founder of Heroica. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Ainoa Marcos, and I'm account executive for K-12 education uh, in public sector at Microsoft. So basically, I work with uh, different regional MOEs here in Spain to try to implement the technology and, and try to get more girls and, and young ladies into STEM careers. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Andres Martinez. Everybody call me Almo, and actually I am working uh, for Google as a regional lead for developer relation, uh, taking care of the activities in Spain, Portugal, Netherlands, and the Nordics. Um, it's important diversity in uh, any case, but in particular in uh, software innovation in the developer relation, it's really important to foster the participation of uh, minorities. Obviously, gender diversity is uh, a crucial point here, but uh, we basically try to be inclusive and to develop activities that foster the participation of uh, women and uh, minorities in, in technology. I think I have one. My name is Alicia Martin. Uh, I co-organize this panel with Mariel. Thank you all for being here. My background is in education and technology. Uh, I am a Tech and Ladies member and also take part in a different communities, empowering teachers and kids in, in STEM fields. Uh, we would like to thank IQ and Karina for letting this panel take place and mostly to our panelists. We came from around the world, stop this agenda and, and, and share with us uh, your knowledge. Thank you all, and let's start. Yes, sure. We'll start directly. The questions is important. <laughs> uh, what factors do you think contribute to this low number of women in STEM? I think that, for example, Talia, you have <laughs> a, a good idea about this. Okay, yeah, I think a large part of the reason for uh, so few women in tech is related to culture. Um, and it has to do with kids growing up in families or in communities where it's actually not common to have a lot of women go into STEM fields. And it's also, in many cases, discouraged. Um, you know, a lot of 
cultures uh, do not feel that it's um, feminine, for example, to go into tech, and so the, the culture actually gives negative feedback to women who pursue careers in this field. So I think, I think that can also lead to things like unconscious bias, which is where you have people who have um, you know, a bias that they don't even know they have that causes them to treat women differently or p people differently um, for whom the unconscious bias is against. So I think factors like culture and unconscious bias in the end discourage women from participating in the, in the field. Good. Um, now, I don't know. Who want to continue? Uh, of course, I uh, accord with you. But also, there are a low visibility of women in, in the sector. So there are no models for the, ch the children. So this is one of the factors. Of course, the culture, but we need more visibility. Because there are women working in technology but they are not visible in the newspapers and the TV or you know, on internet or in, in the present face-to-face -face events. So that's another factor. And, and uh, following this idea, well, we are aware, everybody, we are in events that are all male panels. There's no inclusion, there's no reference, female reference, and, and there, we are the, 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 the half of the population world population. You don't find any woman that stay in the panel, you know? So in uh, Mujeres States, we, we help to this association organization to find references, as uh, Alicia says. We don't live in the books. We don't live uh, in Wikipedia, at Wikipedia. So we have to start to increase the visibility and uh, also to to help the women to empower themselves. Because because you are when you are a kid, the all the people say you are bossy, you can be a leader, so you can ask more money for your salary, you can feel uh, self-confident to to propose yourself as a leader of the team. So this this is impacting in all of this. It's the stereotypes. You know, we have to hack all the stereotypes that we grow. And we have to change the culture where that's discouraged yes, for women, right? Yes. We have to change the culture where leadership is considered bossy for women. Right? I think it's good your point of view, Christina, because I'm you sorry, <laughs> and men and men has has to take care of the family, has to be co-responsibility. In Spanish, it's co-responsibilidad. But we have to be co-responsible. No, I help of the family. No, you have to. You have to. It, to ca take care and be responsible of your 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 um, your uh, agreement or your your life, you know, with your partner, you know. To share. To share yes, to the, share the, and the help her. Yes, so you. let me see if I get this right. <laughs> okay. So we're talking about culture, no? So let's call it right. We're talking about bro culture. So in a sense, uh, there are many different ways, and especially through many decades, we keep hearing this. We need to empower women. I don't think that we have to empower women. The thing is that women were born already empowered. So we need to start even using the way we talk among each other and how we relate to what we're trying to do and the women that we need to give visibility and even their talent in a completely different way. So I just wanted to add that. <laughs> yes, we are talking about technology, but uh, it's a challenge in the all areas because the culture is influenced to the woman in all uh, fields. Yeah. I have, it's, uh, I, sorry, you didn't sorry. Uh, uh, because okay. now we are talking by, uh, about technology, but there are uh, other stereotypes that is inverse. There are, for example, some careers or some fields that are for women, and the, mer the men are not included. In the in that file, ah, so yes. we need to change the stereotype for both both ways. Okay, yeah, I think that uh, Andres Almo <laughs> that you want to call, uh, you have interesting idea for the challenges <laughs> challengers that we have. Yeah. So, um, what I saw uh, in our activities basically is uh, cultural factor are really important. So I'm dealing with. Uh, basically communities in the south of Europe, uh, but at the same time with communities in the north. 
So um, in many sense, uh, Nordics are really uh, supportive in the uh, diversity. They are really inclusive, trying to offer uh, opportunities to everyone, obviously women. Um, in the South, there are more connection with kind of tradition. So basically, I think it's important to try to um, offer uh, good role models for people trying to develop working on technologies. So this is really important, and basically, in that sense, uh, the women that are already working on tech are good examples because they have been uh, facing this uh, challenge, trying to develop as a professional in this area. So probably you can be a very good influence for uh, young women, young girls working or aiming to develop a career in this in this area. So I think that visibility and role models are really, really important. There's something really interesting as well, is probably we are uh, evolving so fast that maybe the new uh, women in tech are going to face different challenges. Maybe you were facing challenges in the past where maybe the academia was quite traditional and there was uh, a lot of, you know, difficulties for women uh, willing to go in that direction. But now it's, it's different, so probably we need to be uh, really aware of this situation and trying to help the new candidate, let's say, with the new tools. And I think that we are going in the in that right direction for the future, but we have to work also taking care of the current women working on tech. So different problems for different generation of women uh, cultural uh, differences are really important, so um, it's really difficult to, you know, uh, if you try to empower uh, women in the uh, uh, emerging countries, maybe it's much harder for them than here in, in, in Europe or, or in Norway. So um, probably we don't have just one solution for uh, every situation, so we need to be really uh, aware of this diversity and trying to help in different ways for different problems. This is probably my uh, main yeah. point here. And, and, and I agree with Alma that we are in the, in the good direction and this um, is gonna be probably solved in the future, but the, uh, a few months ago, um, the, um, the Economic World Forum predict that the, um, the, the, this gap, this gender gap, is not gonna be closed until 2033. So we are making um, a, a, good, uh, a good approach um, and progress, but this is being slow. We need to do more. We but talking. we can do something uh, agile, you know, <laughs> in agile. <laughs> we can make a lean startup, as a social lean startup, you know, and to, to go faster, doing a proof of concept you don't need to, to, to create a, a national program with uh, some budget. No, start to do something. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and f doing few things, you can change your, your ideas. It's for example, asking uh, someone here, well, you, more of you, uh, you are from, from uh, education yeah, or engineering, engineer, but in, in the companies. How many people ask what is, uh, what is the diversity and inclusion program? And what is the action? And what, when, what they are doing? It, sometimes the, the, the most of the people doesn't know about the diversity and inclusion program of the, their companies. And, and I agree with Christina. Uh, there's also something that is extremely disturbing. When we talk about diversity and we see the budgets of the big corporations, and especially their diversity departments, they include women there. It seems that we are kind of a different species. So, and, and minority. And minority. if you think about it, if you think about it, I mean, we need to look about diversity where we were talking yesterday, last yeah, night. It's not only gender, it's age, race, sexual orientation. There's a lot of diversity. There is all of the, there is no white man, Jewish Christian, straight, with without disability. The rest, we are diverse. <laughs> and multi-diverse sometimes. It's, it's true. So it seems that even gender goes even to the other side, you know, to the dark side. And 
I think that these days, people, they don't know the difference between diversity and inclusion. And we were talking about that last night. Um, if you think about it, uh, I always put it this way. Diversity is when you are invited to the table. Inclusion is actually when you can pick and make a decision from the menu and order your own food. So we need to see more women making decisions in companies, for sure. We can go with the second one. Well, I guess we have another question, but I guess that is already maybe answered. We, so uh, maybe we can, we can you go want to pass? the I next go. one. Yeah. OK. Because your uh, answer already very good. <laughs> at school, all levels, uh, how important it can be for all students to access the same curri curriculum in STEM? Uh, for example, I don't know. Alicia, you want to start because you, you have a research about this. Uh, nowadays, there are um, a lot of um, experiences to introduce computational thinking in the school. This is the, one of the main uh, ways to, to improve and to introduce in the curriculum the STEAM for all the people in the schools for girls and for boys. And there are different solutions and different programs in the, all the world working to improve the definition and the implementation of computational thinking in the schools. Uh, for example, uh, there are several European projects uh, coordinated from Belgium. Uh, the name is TACL. And it's very interesting because they produce different re uh, resources to the teachers to use in the classroom. Because uh, nowadays, there are a lot of curriculums without computational thinking included in the, in the, in the courses. And the teachers are not um, trained to be computational thinking uh, teachers. So we have to start to uh, provide different materials, not technological material. It's not necessary to, to learn uh, computational thinking. For example, there are different resources to use uh, cars to think about how to uh, do a for buckle or a while of uh, if else uh, uh, algorithm. But with cars, that is simple for the students and it's simple for the teachers because there, when you teach computational thinking, there are different problems and one of them are related to use um, materials that uh, have a cost to the school. So this is one of uh, the requirements to introduce and um, reduce the gender gap from the school up to the, to the professional life. So maybe I know. A yeah, um, but basically uh, what we have seen at the schools is, and, 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 and we have data from a research that Microsoft has run with uh, different universities and, and experts and schools, both in the US and, and in Europe, and making interviews to, to girls, uh, more than 6,000 girls around the world about what, um, what, what was the reason of this disengagement around STEM. Uh, basically, what was out from this study is that um, from 11 to 12 years, girls are very excited and motivated with STEM, but from 12 to 15 years, this motivation and this interest for STEM subjects and, and of course, careers uh, decrease completely and irreversibly. So we have this, this gap of, of four years between 11 to 15 years when we need to act and, and, and schools and ministries of education, regional um, representatives, they, they have to think, of course, schools and teachers, how we can uh, promote STEAM interests uh, among the girls. And, and going back to the, to the first question, but aligned with this, um, the, the two more, more important reasons that the girl says that they, are, they, they get disengaged with STEM, one is the lack of, of role models, as we pre previously mentioned. 
Um, and the second one is because they don't see um, a correlation between what is studied at the school and the real lives. There is no practical experience there. Is, there is no hands-on. And they don't see this link between the, the real life and, and what is studied at the school. So they get completely disengaged. And there are other reasons. And, 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 and I think we need to promote type of activities like, like programming, and robotics, computer science activities, so that they can be hands-on. They can see the importance of, of learning these uh, computer, com computers, computer science and, and engineering um, st uh, or STEM subjects at the school. So Mariel, your question was whether the curriculum should be the same, right, for all students. And I think it's an interesting question because it depends on how good the curriculum is, right? There shouldn't be any students that have a worse curriculum because a school can't afford, for example, something. Which means, you know, we need to be focused on how do, how do we get high quality educational materials into the largest number of hands so that students aren't held back by their, their lack of access to good curriculum. Now, uh, the technological is like an extracurriculum and not inside. Uh, you, you it's like reading. You, if yeah, you put exactly. in the same level yeah. computing and thinking and reading, yeah. you, are, you are in the same level. You are working in the same level. There's a technical side and art sides, because I defend STEAM with arts. I am PhD in linguistics, and, uh, and very important. No matter what, whatever you want to, to study, you have to use the technology. We live in the digital era. And if the kids, you, use, uh, you start to use computational thinking as a reading, you are going to link it, uh, this knowledge if uh, boys for the boys for girls. So that's easier. And also, uh, uh, the co-founder of Mujeres Tech, Sara Alvarellos, she's working in a, with the Ministry of Education to develop the computational thinking in the first stage of the education. Because it's the key, it's the key. Yeah. I know I told, told us about the key of this age, special age. No, I, I, was, I, I just wanted to add, um, here in Spain I work, so my, my daily work is with, with the regional MOE. So in Spain we have like 17 mini countries with the different um, competencies on education. And, and, and you can see in this, specifically in this aspect, you can see how different it is, how uh, programming or robotics or technology, it is implemented in the curriculum in the different regions. So for example, in Madrid, it is, it is included in the curriculum. There is a subject, but you, uh, you see other regions like Castilla Leon or, 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 or other regions where they, they are implementing this in a transversal way, not as a specific subject, as a different subject. And there are other regions that are doing amazing things, but as, as something extra, extracurricular. So this, this, also this difference in the same country, I think is, is stopping this development. Hola, sí, mejor. Yeah, um, you mentioned that there is a gap. Uh, I mean, um, uh, most of the girls um, decide to uh, give up uh, technical studies uh, or curricula in basically four years. So um, I don't know why. This is a very interesting situation because actually um, this has happened. Um, but do you think that? we can uh, fix that situation presenting technical material in a different way? Because uh, I didn't get the, the question uh, in the right way at the beginning, but now uh, I think that probably this is a very interesting uh, way to, uh, to talk about the, the, the problem. I mean, uh, if we present technical content for women in a different way in that early stage, so we, um, we might have different results. Is something of the way that we present those uh, uh, subjects? I don't think it is, 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 it is related with the way we present specifically to girls uh, in, 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 in comparison to boys. I think it is more a matter of 
they, they or this is what is from this study. It is a matter of they they don't really see a role model um, for for these careers, so they don't they don't figure out themselves in these positions or in these uh, careers or in these um, in these jobs. And also, um, it is also the cultural component, and this, this you can see the difference from answers from girls, from example, from Russia or, or other countries, uh, that, that girls say, uh, they, someone told them at some point, uh, this is not for you. Or they, feel, or they think, no, no, this is not for me because I or don't think for feel the smart capable. So or it's for the smart people. That, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 so so it, is, it is also a matter of empower girls to make their aware uh, that they are able to, that, that they can be in this position in the future, but that they don't see it um, in, in some cases, of course, this is not, we can, but as they don't see it in, in their families or, or their, it's, they don't see, they don't have the, those role models, they, they don't think they are able to. So it is, I think it is a matter of from, from families and from schools to empower girls. And, and to motivate them. And how can we motivate, as I mentioned before, changing the way that we teach STEM, STEM subjects, more practical, more hands-on, more project-based learning, more, more, more game-based learning, more, more practical activities, and also having more role models will change this situation. Yeah, I agree. And just one thing to add to that is, I think if you create a separate curriculum for women, you have a risk of reinforcing a lot of the negative, a lot of the differences. Yes. Right, you have, a, you have an opportunity to reinforce differences where really what we need to do is kind of, you know, make it more normal for women to just be a part of the STEM education in general, yeah. It's inclusion, not just uh, women and men. I wonder to know because it's true that there is a gap that the girls, they don't want to study science. We don't know why exactly, but the thing is not only before the university, is when, when they start working, they live uh, to pursue these careers in these fields. Even if they study something in science, they live the, the career. What do you think? Yeah. Micah, that? Micah, have why, why is that happening? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to share with you um, a little bit of data, you know, especially from the United States. We have around 42 to 47 percent of women uh, studying in college STEM careers, but uh, Two years later, after they graduated, uh, there are only 12 to 17 percent left um, still, you know, in, in the technical field. So I had in the past two years a lot of conversations with uh, uh, many entrepreneurs that are hiring women, and uh, we always come to the same conclusion. Um, they're telling me, uh, Micah, why they don't want to work for us? Or uh, there's something that I'm missing. Um, we have seen, after having so many conversations and actually listening to different women, different ages and different professionals, one, of course, is role models. They need to find also in the companies role models. But also, the pay gap could be Another, another issue, I mean, let's face it, we get really motivated if we have equal pay. At least I do. I don't know about you, but I do. And the third one is, what kind of career path are you offering also to these women? Are you going to be actually mentoring them in the future? Or are just you going to use them just you know, to code? Are you going to actually develop? with the right career initiatives and path inside the company so they can actually develop their own career in that company? Are you going to invest in them? So all of, all of these things have to come into the equation if we want to keep women as well in tech careers. I, th I think that is a, back to the, is a society question because the structure of this society is totally male. So my voice is not the same. Uh, my voice has not the same power of the men voice in a company. When I am in a, in a meeting and I say, this is my idea, there is not 
the same idea, if, the, if, the, if a, a son, uh, a male colleague get the same idea and expose publicly, then, oh, that's great. Oh, we've, we, we live different things, different situations that the men don't live. So there is very, uh, very, very important that the companies create this atmosphere, they create their comfort zone for, for the women. If the women are great, they are going to stay, even though they, they, they pay, they, they, they get more, less pay. But, but if you feel great, you are going to stay. If you feel empowered because your colleagues look at you as an equal, so there's the, 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 beast, the big challenge. All the men, all the men colleagues realize about that. Think about the conscious, take conscious about the unconscious bias and say, yes, I'm going to listen to you and I give you the power and I'm going to promote to you as a leader, as for example. So there's situation. And also, if the company looks like a old mother, I'm going to, you're going to have a family and you're going to lose career respect of your male colleagues, so that is a problem too. So we're talking about that equal uh, responsibility at house, like men, as the, the same paternity, pat, ¿cómo se dice permiso de paternidad? I don't know how to say in English. Permiso de paternidad. Paternity, paternity leave. Eso, pues the same paternity leave, they share. They share. Pues, we are the same time with we are outside of the company, so we are the same rhythm. So there is there is several actions that we have to realize that impact neg negatively to the women. Christina, that we have to change that. I totally agree what you say, but the thing is that even after making a big effort studying um, science career, they leave it. Do you think that it's something because it's also cultural, it's a, it's a hard work, more in science than in another field? Why do you think that they leave this science career even after they study it? I, sorry. I always put the same example. Uh, talking about in a panel with the tech communities, different tech community girls, so one of them say, I am back-end girls or something like that, association, I don't know, but she say, I go to a meetup and all the men ask me what I do. But I don't know, I don't go to the, another man and ask, oh, what do you do here? And this, this is a sample, very illustrative, that it shared to you like, what's happened here? We have to extra demonstrate what we do, our skills, our knowledge. But the men know, so this. And more or less, and, and let you me have to explain all the time. You're boring, and you get another sector. And, and let me give you another another data um, from the study also, because this is also the perception that the girls have. And 60 percent of the girls that were interviewed in these studies, they admitted they would feel more confident pursuing a career in STEM fields if they knew men and women women were equally employed in those professions. So they know it, they, they have this perception, and this is also another reason they are not going in this direction. That's a really good point. And I think, Christine, I think you're right. There's, you know, there's this need to sort of prove yourself more, or women at least feel that they need to prove themselves more. Um, and it's related to this idea of sort of like the imposter syndrome. You know, this is like a lot of people talk about this, you know, and um, this belief like, oh, I'm, I'm not really as good as everybody else, it's just, you know, it, a lot of women go through that and they experience that and then all the feedback they get that's like, why are you here, sort of reinforces, right? <laughs> that they feel they need to prove themselves more and I think, I think that's a good point. It's pretty tired, it's pretty tired too. It's pretty tired, you have to, to all the time, yes, I'm program, blah, blah, blah. It's pretty tired and, and, you, and, you, and, and you don't feel comfortable. I study, I work like uh, the same as you. And I don't say the, film, the same uh, hour, so the same things, you know. Uh, I, would, I would like to add that in that sense, it's really important to create and work in order to foster inclusive, uh, you know, environments. 
So uh, we have been working internally, uh, basically training um, employees in the company, uh, developing communities of employees, trying to be inclusive from many different point of view. You, you were saying before that uh, we need to start working on being more inclusive in many different sense. Um, obviously, gender is, is really important, but probably very soon we are going to face a different situation where uh, inclusion is really important. So uh, training uh, your people, your employees, uh, your uh, bodies, if you wish, uh, on inclusion is really important. Uh, this is even harder in the in the communities. When you organize a meetup, sometimes you don't. Isn't, I mean, you don't really care. Uh, it's not uh, uh, something that you you do on purpose. But basically, uh, you forget to take into account uh, inclusion. So we have been working with the community, uh, recommending them to use a code of contact, just to be sure that they understand that they have to be inclusive. It's really important to be open to different people, uh, and basically we get more from the interaction if we are open. So it's very simple, it's uh, basically uh, pitching people, mentoring on these things, but basically you can change a lot of the situation, it basically you raise your hand and say, uh, we need to fix this. Uh, because many people don't realize that they are not inclusive uh, for many different uh, reasons. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, uh, something really on purpose. But at the end, this behavior is something that we can fix. Basically, uh, telling them we need to work on that. So, is it a work that companies has to do, or is more cultural and company issue, changing this mind and uh, making uh, inclusive? I think it's affecting everyone. We have bias from the cultural point of view. We have tradition. So basically, there are many things that uh, make us, um, you know, work in a specific way. Uh, so probably we need to work uh, at the family level. I think it's important because you are uh, teaching your kids from the very beginning of many different things. So it's important for uh, them feel that you are really an open person. You are inclusive. Um, Obviously, the school is also really important and the industry. Um, talking about developers, we have probably a, a, an additional situation is that a lot of activities around technology is happening on meetups. So no structural organization is kind of happening by itself. Uh, so probably we need to f uh, reach them, contact them, and explain that we need to work on that. Um, from my experience, people used to be really positive. You talk with the, an organizer and explain that they have to be inclusive. Most of the people is really happy. Uh, they understand that this is really important. So um, we need to be proactive, but I feel that the, the result could be really positive. Uh, I want to ask a typical question, uh, but I want to, to be <laughs> quickly because we are done going to have more time, but why do you think it's important to have women in STEM fields? This is a typical question for people who don't understand. Oh, why well, you are talking about this? Now explain. <laughs> yeah, and that, that question is like, it comes up all the time. Like, why do we need more women in STEM? And I feel like that that is like, you know, it's almost forcing women to justify why we should be included. And it's, you know, instead, I think a better, you know, a better way to ask the same question is like, why have we been ignoring 50% of the population, right? Why have we been neglecting so much talent? You know, if, if, if somebody said, hey, why, do you, why should we have more talented people in STEM, the question would be like crazy, right? <laughs> we need more talented people in general, and 50% of the population is female, so that, you know, that's why, <laughs> you know? Um, there are a, a report of the World Economic Forum in, uh, prepared in January of 2016. They say that uh, the market force transform industry in favor of technological skill development. So in, in 10 or 20 years, uh, several uh, worlds will need people uh, have technological skills. So if we... Um, not include women 
there are uh, a lot of uh, war uh, places that uh, will, um, I don't know how to say, um, we, are not going we, to we will have to more the... work that, than people well, working in the places. Yes. I want to change the question. Why we need men in, in this team? <laughs> yes, think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Why? It's the same question. It's the same question. This is linguistics. Yes. Why? We are person. We are sound, people. Sound strange when we, we yes, do change, the same change. question, but asking why not many. Yes. Why? But it's the same question. It's the same because question. We, oh, yeah, the why? Same for why? When? When? when we why? We need because it's diversity. a difficult question. No, we are people. <laughs> people. People. <laughs> we because, are people. Because we, we need, need talent. People. We need talent. More talent. 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 More talent. Diversity. <laughs> Diversity. White, black, uh, heterosexual, homosexual, uh, uh, Jewish, uh, Arab, whatever, whatever, whoever. We need all the talent of this world working on digital sector. We lost this. It's not a yeah. question of money. It's a question of social innovation. So let's change the world. Come on. Talking about communities, maybe uh, Andres can tell us a little bit more. Is diversity? The question maybe you're not going to be agree, but uh, the thing is that what is a women tech, commun tech community? We have difference. We have to make inclusive, but why um, women communities? Well, first of all, um, here in, in, in Spain, in, in the area that I have been working uh, with, basically we start, I would say, really early maybe it was four years ago, we started uh, fostering uh, communities of women. And probably the main reason is because many things that you already mentioned here. Um, so I try to be quite open, uh, but basically I think that when you organize a community for women, when you organize an event only for women, uh, if the people basically attend the event is because they feel that this it's good for them. So maybe because they feel that the, the, the current meetup are not really inclusive, or maybe because they consider uh, more comfortable talking with women. But the truth is that if they like it, why not? I don't see any trouble here. So from the very beginning, basically, we try to uh, be open in the way that we face diversity. And I think this is really important. I used to. Uh, um, I used to express how diverse is the situation because last year we were in, in Salamanca working with the communities from Spain and we have a specific discussion on, on diversity. So we were more or less 60 person and at the end of the conversation we have 300 different opinions. So basically it's, it's a tough situation and we, we have to be open because uh, I remember there were some women considering that we need to lower the level for some uh, meetups in order to be more inclusive and offer opportunities for women that maybe don't have right now the same level of men in order to uh, present in public. If they feel that this is good, I think that this is great. Other women were saying, no, 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 we don't have to change the level, the level has to be the same. And for me, if they are happy with that, it's also interesting. What I'm trying to say is that probably we need to be open in the way that we work together in order to be more diverse. Because there is not just one solution for solving every single problem. So uh, if there is a specific community of women that feel better just having an event for themselves, for me it's okay, let's go. Probably in the future we won't need it. Um, it would be great. But I don't really care if 10 years ahead we still need uh, uh, events only for women, why not? We have uh, different formats, so if in some way it helps to be more diverse and to be more inclusive, I think it's a good idea. So is it necessary to create a women tech for the moment, nowadays, maybe in the future, as you say, it won the six and it was inclusive? Totally. I think it's, it's perfect. Uh, it's a way to, again, foster and to uh, foster diversity and to maybe 
um, spread the awareness of the situation. So okay. let's do it. And actually, it has been working really well. Uh, in the last two years, we have a lot of initiative. This forum of the conversation or discussion is really important because uh, in particular in some kind of traditional uh, environment like uh, academia sometime is, mm, we need to highlight even more that uh, we need to work and to be uh, proactive solving this situation. So I don't see any specific problem here um, with communities of only women. Uh, yes, it's, um, I think it's necessary, but it's not mandatory. Yeah. You, if you are in a city and you feel comfortable and safety and you are okay with, in events and communities and spaces with other uh, people that develop, it's okay. Maybe you don't need a woman co community. But there are other situations, other places, other spaces that you need to be more comfortable or you need to uh, talk with uh, other person like you, like you as a woman, maybe not as a race or your religion or other things. So it's important if you need it. Mm -hmm. If you don't need it, okay, it's not mandatory. But we have uh, to understand that there are different places and the world is very heterogeneous. So you, if you need to be comfortable, we cannot um, uh, critic people that going together to prepare an event only for women. Mm -hmm. Okay, if they want, it's okay because it's good for them. So. Um, this is my point of view. No, no, no. I, I just want to add something. We do need these events. And yes, we need to put out there in conferences, in summits, the word women. I mean, we have Mujeres Tech. We have the San Francisco International Women Entrepreneurs Forum. I wish I could delete the word women from actually the name of our organization, because that will mean that actually we have equality, that inclusion and diversity is not an issue. But unfortunately, unfortunately, it's still an issue. And we need to give visibility to all these women. And we need to give them visibility so they have also an opportunity to find resources, to get the funding that they might need, to, to get the right education, to get access to the right initiatives. So here's a question to all of you. I mean, we keep talking about diversity and inclusion. And I would love to know, we have big corporations right now in other fields, in other industries, that they are disclosing information that for women is extremely important. They're actually committed to the women economic principles from the UN. UN women. And in the tech sector, every time that they hear about these principles or even disclosing information about salaries, this is like a tiny cloud. Nobody says anything or nobody speaks up. And actually, I remember last year in San Francisco, many uh, women developers, they wanted to find out what their male counterparts were making. So. Yes, we need to put women out there, and we need to find more about what's happening as well. Well, in, uh, in Mujeres Tech, at the beginning was Mujeres Tech, and now it's not, not for now, because I, I, I think it right now. No, no. It's Mujeres Tech and Alice, men Alice. Yes. We, in fact, our Mujeres Tech in Catalonia is uh, uh, Aurelio Ruiz. And he managed Mujeres Tech there. He launched uh, Visibiliza Las. This is a challenge for secondary people that have to edit the Wikipedia to put the, role, the women role models in the Wikipedia, take real role models. So for me, it's very, and when I, I am uh, collaborating in different panels and there is no man here, say, hey, we have to be inclusive. We have to start being inclusive uh, ourselves. So, so I, I always say we have to uh, to invite because 
we, we have to change this uh, if, uh, in a collaborative way. And we need the men of the, in, in this. Hey guys, we need you. Please, we need you to change this. But a start for that you have to understand that is uh, this very important for your niece, for your daughters, for your colleagues, women colleagues, that's very, very important. Similar, similar is in the woman tech makers uh, promoted by Google. It's uh, for women, but it's not by woman. Uh -huh. There are several leads that are men, and this is important because they have to uh, work together to improve and to face the challenges related to the gender gap. And this is one of the things that I like uh, the Women Tech Makers uh, project because they include the men to solve the questions. And moreover, it's not focused only in women, it's focused in inclusion. Two years ago, we have a summit in Berlin, and we have a working groups session, and we talk about how to be more inclusive in your events. Not only to give more women, also to uh, give more people, not young people. For example, in this room, it's accessible. You can get here and you can stay if you have a well, um, well chair. But this is inclusion. If you don't have the, the I don't know how, the ramp, or you, can, you don't have a space in some places to put, to put a wheelchair, it's not inclusive, the event. Because you cannot uh, enter. You can restrict for some people in the society. So this is one of the focus that uh, I like this, this kind of, of project. But of course, it's necessary to have project for women and project with only women. For example, it's not my case in Salamanca, but uh, I was talking with Mariel about this. In Mexico, uh, start a community only for women. Um, the name, I don't, um, sorry, because I've forgotten. And uh, Epic Girl, Epic Queen, Epic Queen. And I was uh, with the uh, co the organizer of the, chap of the chapter in Monterrey, and she was to, uh, talking to me that in, in Mexico, and in particular in Monterrey, I don't can talk about the other states or, or the other cities, uh, it's necessary to have an, a space, a safety space only for women. So, of course, this is a good idea and, and it's necessary. So, yeah. And in uh, Mujeres Tech, we develop a Girls Tech. This is a program for girls the, from 9 to 12 years old, thanks to the U.S. Embassy, because uh, he uh, support this program. And we have created a community of girls, the three, 320 girls in less than three years. And when the people ask us, uh, why you do uh, uh, workshops only for girls? And I say, yes, because for... Uh, I'm pretty sad because this society, the, the, the parents, they think about robotics and say, oh, the, the boy. And the girl goes to oh, French or ballet or another things because the unconscious bias. So this is, I force to this family to think about the idea that she can, she's smart and she can, it, uh, start to, to make um, amazing things with the technology. This is the reason why we do. But in, a, in another workshops for, uh, for entrepreneurship or digital skills or different areas, there's a inclusive. There are men, women, and uh, the last one was uh, about blockchain. So, and, 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 but at the beginning for the, 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 the steps, we have to focus on girls tech because to think about let the, the wake up of the uh, conscious side of the unconscious bias of the families. Ah, was I, was I in this? 
Yes, I'm going to. Yes, yes, I'm going to. I'm going to explain you. Well, we uh, we organize uh, with Ispasat. Ispasat is a, um, a, a Spanish company. They create uh, satellites, 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 and um, we went with the Girls Tech Group. And I told to the groups, hey girls, we are going to go to this Passat and the president, Elena Pesonero, she is a woman, uh, she's going to explain what is this Passat. And Ines, she's the boss engineering, so she's going to explain us how is uh, how is uh, is works a uh, satellite and how create a satellite work because them we are going to create a proto prototype uh, with the little bits uh, a satellite to sell the president of the company. And one girl say, for how many? <laughs> <laughs> how many money? I, I, we are going to get it. <laughs> yes, because it, that this girl, because the, the first day that uh, we, we do with this girl is to make this question, what is your name? And uh, what, what, uh, what is the, the matter the issue that you are great? What you, and most of them, they don't, they, don't, uh, they don't know what to say, you know? It's like, and this girl? Oh, she's only eight years old, you say. Eight, eight nine, nine to 12. Oh. But she's thinking about money, she's thinking about business. <laughs> and I say, I want you in my team, lady. <laughs> Yeah, um, our CEO, Satya Nadella, he, he always says uh, that our purpose is to empower every person in the planet to get more. And with this, he's, he's being inclusive. I mean, he, he, he means women and men. So, of course, diver diversity and inclusion is, uh, are the, the pillars of, of, of the values of the company. But basically, for this, for empower everyone, Everyone, that means with, with all the differences that we have, but because the most important in, in, in the company is also to empower the talent of every person. So those are the most important values. Um, from, from our side, uh, again, um, it's important uh, as a way to manage the talents and to be really uh, ready for a global company uh, to be inclusive and be able to gather as much talent as, as we can. Actually, our, uh, uh, our main goal is to uh, manage the global information and make it accessible for everyone. So that means exactly that, for everyone. So having said that, uh, we work at a different level because we understand that uh, obviously we as a company have to be diverse. Um, I have to say that so far, for this standing global term, uh, women are only 30 percent, 31 percent of the uh, of the employees. So we have still a lot of things to do. We are working on that. It's hard, but basically the commitment is is important. So what we have been doing basically is to share what we do internally. There is a, a nice reference that you can check online. Basically, it's Google.com/diversity. A lot of information and details about what we do internally. But sharing what we do, even we don't have good numbers in some cases, is important because I think that we are a company that many people uh, follow as a reference. So if we are uh, working on that, you can do also. Second thing, obviously, is trying to increase uh, diversity in share of uh, employees and offer them the let's say, speaking opportunities to share what they do, what they are. So we have been fostering uh, unconscious bias training. 70% of the people manager follow that training. Um, 
we have been doing a lot of promotion internally just to be sure that everyone understands that sometimes, uh, even though we don't do on purpose, we can do uh, something that could potentially exclude some people from our environment or conversation or meeting or whatever. Uh, obviously, we're trying to hire diverse people. So for example, what we have been doing is not look just at the same place every time. So there are some kind of uh, typical references in terms of universities that everyone is going there, but that there is a lot of exclusion in terms of minorities and uh, countries. So we are expanding uh, our recruiting process just to be sure that we really cover a diverse uh, base of uh, potential candidates. Another interesting thing is that we have been um, developing internship program, training program in order to uh, allow people to contact earlier and often with technology. So basically, we foster the participation of, again, minorities and uh, diverse population and the opportunities to get hired by Google, to contribute. Um, this is not the typical pitch that we do regarding uh, uh, diversity and inclusion, but I think it's also really important. We foster a lot of open source. When you have a community of developer working on and, and a community online, basically you are fostering contribution for every single place in the world. So this is also uh, important. And another thing that uh, probably is something different uh, regarding other experiences that I have in the past is we are fostering a diverse uh, network of suppliers. Again, this is important. Because when you work only with big companies, at the end you are excluding a lot of people from your uh, activities, from your organization. So you rely on a small company, on a startup, on companies from different sources, and you create a proper platform to allow them uh, to work with you. One more time, you are creating a diverse structure. So probably these are the most interesting thing from a very personal point of view, I recommend you to check in this uh, uh, google.com slash diversity where there is a lot of information. But I think that working uh, actively to find uh, candidates in other places is important. Um, be open in many different sense, including open source is really important. And uh, develop a network of uh, diverse suppliers, uh, basically making easier for them to work with you for some paying in 30 days in Spain is really important. There are a lot of companies paying, even the, the government paying really late. So this is a way to basically provide opportunities for many people to work with Google and really create uh, a diverse uh, ecosystem, which is mandatory if you want to be a global company. That's my point. Thank you. I, I just wanted to add, um, there is a, a great for uh, for the company to attract, to retain, and to and to and to empower this this uh, this diversity and, and promoting women in, in in the company. So, for example, forty two percent of the leadership team in 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 Spain in, at Microsoft at Spain, forty two people are women. That's not happening in other uh, in other countries or in other companies. What I think is, is really important. And our president, the Microsoft uh, Iberica president, is a woman. But but it's, it's not the first one. It's the third one in, in, in continuously. So the last three presidents of Microsoft in Spain have been a woman. So uh, that, that also internally um, help us to, to empower ourselves to, to be capable to, to be promoted and, and to continue growing into the company. I just want to say something also quickly. Um, so IBM is very old. <laughs> we were founded in 1912 or something. Uh, yeah, 1912 or something like that. Um, but we're, we have a very long history, but we also have a very long history of inclusion. So in 1946 is when we started hiring African American people into IBM. Um, in 1952, the CEO, Thomas J. Watson, wrote a letter about the importance of inclusion. This is 1952. This is like years before the civil rights movement in the 1960s, yeah. right? So even before these kind of huge social movements that led to more inclusion, we were already starting to, to have inclusion. And um, in 2015, there's a, a magazine, Working Mother, it was the 30th year in a row that IBM was listed among the top 100 companies for women to work. 
uh, worldwide. So we have a very, very long history of inclusion. Our CEO is a woman. The COO of research is a woman. Beth Smith, the head of the Watson Group, is a woman. A lot of the directors of research in the AI organization, two out of three are women. So we have a very, very long history of inclusion. And it's like, you know, you show examples by doing, right? So it's really, it's become part of the culture, actually, to be inclusive, at least, you know, in my experience. Yeah. You, you have a, a good list of role models to, to show to the world. You yeah. have a lot of women in your company. Yes. <laughs> and in, yes. I know he is from intelligence. You want to tell us on your company? At intelligence, we, we, are, uh, we are a company of uh, 100 10 people, and when I arrived to intelligence, I asked, what is the diversity and inclusion program? My colleague from uh, talent, she looked at me like, <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I say, okay, let's go to create it. And after that, when I go, when I start to, in, at intelligence, was uh, two years, almost three years ago, and there, are, there were only three women engineers. After three years, there is uh, 10 women engineers, more of them full stack DevOps. So that's amazing for a, a company of, of our side. What, what we do is uh, one woman candidate for every job position and uh, different actions of diversity actions to empower. As, as me, I try to help to my colleagues, women colleagues too, uh, to stay in, uh, in a calls, to give talks, and I give support to, give them, uh, to, to them to give call talks uh, about uh, several matters, tech matters, whatever. So, but it's, it's very important to, to, to give help at the beginning to them, and then they empower, they, they empower themselves, and they go uh, and, 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 and they, they trust them with themselves. Now, so we do these things, and we also, to 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 our, we are a sponsor of uh, a sponsor of different uh, women events like Women Tech Makers in Zaragoza, Mujeres Tech in the Analyse uh, Summit in different uh, actions, and um, sometimes that the someone some community asks us. Uh, most of the uh, most of the, the questions we, we we invest in the female talent was because we trust we are a diversity and inclusive uh, company. We could go with the next one. Okay. Um, talking about the education side, I would like to know maybe somebody here oh, works also for education or universities or schools. Do you have any programs that they can include? Maybe in their day to day at the schools, universities? Yeah, um, again, there's a lot of uh, different initiatives. Um, I just can read some of them, but uh, basically we have been working at different levels, uh, most of them secondary schools, um, and we are sponsor also of some, uh, you know, activities fostering um, early contact with technology. Actually, here in, in Spain, we create a specific format which you know very well. It is uh, uh, GDG Kids, it's Google Developer Groups for Kids, which is a very simple way to offer uh, young people the opportunity to know what we do. For those uh, in secondary schools and the university schools, um, I recommend them to take a look at the, uh, our website because there are plenty of uh, uh, opportunities to get uh, um, in this program. We have uh, Google Summer of Code, which is uh, something that we uh, foster in order to support open source projects uh, for the university students. We have uh, Hascode, which is a program for uh, students in secondary schools. The focus here is not only diversity, actually it's a program to foster technologies but that they could be a good example of what we do. In addition, again, uh, there are plenty of sponsorship and agreement that we uh, have with uh, NGOs to support um, diversity and technology for uh, young students. As, as, I, as I previously mentioned, um, at Microsoft, we try to work in, in both ways, uh, working with K-12 um, institutions and, and, and MOEs 
try to, to implement different activities to promote the STEM uh, among girls and young, and young ladies. Also, as not at the curricular level, um, one, of the, one of the initiatives that I like the most is DigiGirls. That is, uh, we have the DigiGirl Day or the DigiGirl Camp that, um, that brings together girls from middle and high schools. Uh, to work directly with, with the people in the company, with our executives, with our developers. Uh, and this is happening uh, around all locations in Europe, in the USA, in Asia, in, in, or everywhere you, have, you can find in the web uh, where it's happening this, a DG camp um, the, um, day or, or, or camp. And then um, for, for all the, uh, at the university level or at the um, working level, the other one that I like the most also is MakeWorks Next and the Make Works Next patent program, where we, we, we gave the opportunity to women that are developing something to, to have their own patent. And, and for example, uh, recently the group, uh, a group of, of women uh, created a tactile, that this um, um, an, um, a machine that, uh, that, that converts the text to, to Braille, or, or other patterns, for example, in, in, um, in Uganda, uh, a group creating um, an, a mobile app to, um, to detect uh, anemia, or another in Greece uh, for uh, detecting uh, cyberbullying. So those are patterns that we promote girls to work, we work with them, and we promote uh, them to, to have those in the Make Works Next um, program. Just one, one quick thing. We ha a few years ago, we launched a program called P-TECH. It's a pathway to technology program for high school students in New York City. This was in partnership between IBM, but also the New York City Board of Education. And it's basically a high school where they prioritize STEM education. So in fact, the students take classes at a local uh, community college or a local uh, school for engineering, college for engineering. Um, and at the end of the four years, the students have an opportunity to get um, an associate degree, which is, uh, you know, in many cases, students do that after high school. They do a four-year high school, and then they do two more years associate's degree. But this school is basically focused on getting more kids into STEM by exposing them to, to these topics and giving them that associate's degree as part of their education. Um, and uh, it's been, it's been, you know, it's been great. There's a lot of these students go on to pursue STEM careers. And Maika, you have some boot camps in, in, the, in your forum. In, in fact, in two weeks, you are going to have a big uh, congress in Canary, um, in Gran Canaria. Uh, maybe you can tell us about the boot camp and what you are going to do. Oh, definitely. Uh, we're always trying to, to bring uh, new knowledge and resources uh, to women and girls and, of course, share it with uh, our <coughs> male allies. Um, we are, of course, extremely inclusive. So one of the things before I move to the, to the summit in Gran Canaria, I want to say that we collaborate with IGNITE. IGNITE is an initiative and program created by the Obama administration. And basically, we go in the United States uh, to high schools, bring in uh, a group of women that are amazing role models uh, to the girls and the boys at the high school. So they, they get into STEM. Um, Regarding the Gran Canaria Summit, that is going to be our fourth one, and it's going to be on May 10th and 11th. Um, this year, we're super excited because uh, we're going to have uh, a couple of uh, boot camps uh, and workshops. Uh, one of them is going to be provided by Adi. Adi, she is uh, the managing director of the accelerators of Angel Hack. She is also um, at the board of uh, South by Southwest, and she is also uh, very familiar uh, with uh, the tech uh, initiatives and tech weeks in Africa. Um, Angel Hack, um, they are around the world um, having hackathons, and they are around the world in 60 countries. So they have a strong presence in supporting programs uh, also for girls in STEM. Um, and she's going to be giving an amazing uh, um, workshop that is a, a boot camp on entrepreneurship. And I would like to call it in asteroids because she's going to be doing it uh, for an hour and a half. So, 
but we have asked, uh, asked her to, to give uh, these concrete tips. Um, we'll also bring in um, Carolina Waranca from um, Capor Capital, and she's going to be giving another uh, workshop um, from the investor perspective, things that you need to consider if you want to get funded. So I think that all these workshops that we're always preparing and the value proposition that we're bringing to the community is just to give them a different perspective on the things that they need if they want to succeed in certain ventures. And also to create a strong bond in the community and give them different exposure. And Cristina, you can tell us about um, well, Laboratoria. I, I, laboratoria, is laboratoria, yes, Laboratoria Mariana and um, uh, some colleagues, uh, they start to, to promote the, they start to promote the women uh, with, uh, uh, the women with uh, social exclusion. So they, they create a program very, very, very uh, original, uh, very innovative. That is, uh, I give you education about back end or front end. They talk before with the companies what you need, what kind of profiles do you need, and we give this education to the to these women, and then free, and then when they get a job, they they back the money to make uh, sustainable, to, uh, sustainable, sustainable, sustainable the, 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 this association. And it's great because they start uh, in, at Peru and now in uh, Mexico, Chile, and I don't know if they are going to open in, in more, more um, places, but it's amazing what they, they are doing in Latin America. Yes, and they focus on something and prepare. Yes, they focus on, on they focus on because the needs. That is a marketing uh, thing. Yes. Uh -huh. What do you need? What kind of profiles? That's great cuz I I focus on on this and and I forget the gap of the education and what the what the market needs, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's great. I focus on the needs, what profiles do you need? And I educate the the women and then they can get uh, a training, and then they can get a job. That's amazing. Um, actually, I just want to add one thing, because I had the, the, the opportunity to meet uh, Mariana in, in Mexico, in Guadalajara. And uh, uh, they're serving to low-income uh, communities, and actually preparing these women, actually, to be economic independent. And uh, I think that uh, Google has a sponsor of the program. She was actually in an amazing panel with President Obama and, and Mr. Uh, Zuckerberg as well. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, really, she's creating a lot of social impact. The other thing that I want to tell you is that, for instance, when we started with the forum, the San Francisco International Women Entrepreneurs Forum, we started as an initiative. And now we're becoming into a startup because we were seeing that we needed to create some digital platform from the growing community of women that we're expecting actually to give visibility to what they're working on. Yes, in this, in, in this line, the Google for Education and Latin America is leading, uh, one of the leaders is uh, Ariel Coren, and she's leading a very, and she created a program very great, is uh, Innovar Para Mi. And the people that give you visibility, and there is a very, very, very creative, and, and has a lot of social impact, because they participate and they show the, the different startups, the different initiatives, the different uh, makers, programs, projects, etc. Yes, that's good. I have one more question, but I'm not going to <laughs> to this because we have only ten minutes, and I want to know is or public want to ask something. Um, we moving into the question. I know. We encourage the people if you have any questions for our panelists. Is um, someone who has to ask? Yeah. Hello. Um, this kind of situation, I think that um, we know a lot of a lot of, uh, of things of, of, of these um, things. But I think uh, I'm, uh, uh, I believe that it's necessary that 
to establish a proposal. Um, it's very important that you uh, establish a point or an action directly uh, for doing. My question is, um, uh, all of you uh, are um, engineering of computers and uh, TI area. And what happened with another kind of fields? I am chemical engineering, for instance. Uh, it's very different, and so difficult. It is different, uh, that, that area. Uh, the, another one is uh, age. Uh, um, my question is, uh, who of you uh, have children? Who of you um, have girls? Uh, what do you um, uh, buy? What, what kind of gift do you buy to your girls? Yes? What are you doing for, for to create another culture, cultures in our, in our girls and in our, in our children? In, in our, in, uh, we have part of the solution. And I think that it's necessary to, to um, put in another side the problems and to uh, start to do actions. Um, I think that uh, more um, uh, focus uh, was Andres. I think that is a, this is the situation for women in, in very in very cases. We uh, create uh, something and around and around and around and around again. We have solutions. Please. That's a really excellent question, um, and I'm really glad you asked it. And in fact, I don't have a background in computer science. My background is actually material science. I did my undergraduate in material science. I did a PhD in material science, and then eventually I came, came, <laughs> came and changed careers. But I think a lot of the advice or a lot of the suggestions are cultural changes needed. Across, I think it's similar. So, you know, my own experience from material science, I think a lot of our shared experiences go back to something about the culture. And, you know, I was telling Marielle, you know, I read the book by Sheryl Sandberg, Lean In. I don't know if other people have read this book, but there's a lot of wisdom in that book. And she, so Sheryl Sandberg is the COO of Facebook, and obviously her career has been in the business domain. But I think a lot of the cultural elements that she identifies are almost universal for women who pursue career, or who are pursuing careers. And she gives advice in the book. And you know, you, you know, she has a 20-minute TED Talk. You can also go and watch that too. But some of the advice is sit at the table. Right? Don't sit on the side and wait to be invited to the table. Sit at the table. You know, raise your hand. You have something to say? Don't, don't, keep the, don't take your hand down. You have something to say? Say it. Right? Um, make your partner a partner. We talked about that. Um, don't leave before you leave is another piece of advice. You know, a lot of women, they plan on having a baby, so they slow down in their career even before they're actually pregnant. Right? They, they slow themselves back. So she has a lot of really good advice that I think is universal for women who are pursuing careers now, but also to, to instill it in your daughters, right? From a young age, don't let people call you bossy. Bossy is leadership, right? You know, get, put your hand up. Don't take your, you know, th these are advice that we, that is good for us, but it's also good for a younger generation. That's what I think. I, I, I also want to say, I I'm, I'm don't have a comp um, engineering background or, or computer science background. Actually, my background is completely the opposite. I'm a former teacher. I'm probably in high school, and probably the, the most opposite to technology subject that is history of art. But I, I, I'm always being passionate about technology. And at some point, probably when I was this, this gap of, of years, 14, 13, 15 years, or someone told me, you're not good for maths. You're not good for this. Um, and I went in the other direction. So what I say to, I have a 12-year daughter. And when I say to my daughter every day, is you can be whatever you want to be. Don't let anybody to tell you what you're going to be or what you, what you can make in your life, because you're going to be whatever you want to be. And I'm working today. I'm, 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 I'm coming from the um, other side, not, not the science, but, but I'm working in, 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 in one of the biggest technological companies in the world. But I'm, I'm matching my two passions here that are education and technology. So you can be whatever you want. Doesn't matter if you are a girl or a boy. Yesterday we talked about uh, it's a pity that the education programs that is uh, science or arts. Why? 
we can fix that. What I can uh, learn, I am PhD in linguistics, and when the, the journalist asked me, why you are you working on technology? And I say, what you do on, uh, on Google, when you search something, you buy words. What <laughs> words? And then speed technologies, when you, you give a voice message, or when you talk, this is speed technologies, this is linguistic, this is a, this amazing landscape that we have at arts. Or for example, Rosa, from the University of Lleida. <laughs> she want to start a, a, a program, a grade, with the mix computer and arts. That's amazing. And I'm going to introduce her uh, a lot of women, makers women, that they do different things, as for example, 3D for, to the Games of Thrones, but not because she, she loves to create it. No, she works with the Games of Thrones production. Or, for example, uh, arts uh, computer girl that uh, when a DJ start to, to put the music, she start to create a landscape through computing with pro through programming. So this is amazing. This is a, uh, this is the same the, the great challenge the 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 Renaissance no Renaissantista the Renaissantist knowledge. I love this, this kind of learning. And another thing that is, I agree totally with you. We are, there are three kinds of people, thinkers, doers, and have to doers. So have to doers. So I prefer, I am doer. And I, what I do is different things. I create, I co-create with the Mujeres Tech, with workshops, with different, we work in stakeholders, but in my, in my, I don't have kids because I decide don't have family. But with my niece, I empower my niece and when uh, my daughter, or uh, my, my sister-in-law called to my niece, she's a bossy and I say, no, she's a leader. She's a leader. And I empower also to my 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 niece and I I embed him you have to cry show your emotions because I develop uh, the emotional uh, the emotional uh, um, intelligence because if I develop and I invent in all my uh, talks that we have to hack these stereotypes but all these starts in the family in the family, how do you say? And it's the question of education and the unconscious bias, and we back, I repeat all that yeah, our colleagues talk about it. But it's true, we have to do things to change the world. And I just wanna to add to that, I'm a non-technical founder. Uh, I study law, I move into international business transactions. Um, Helping women and girls is my daily cap. That's what I do since I wake up every day and every morning. Um, a couple of examples. When Cristina wanted to start uh, Women's Mujeres Tech, we were supporting them, and actually she was helping us also in the forum. <laughs> we are now launching initiatives in Latin America. We just had our first LATAM uh, forum in Ecuador, uh, bringing the communities and actually giving uh, access to new resources. We are showing even big corporations such as uh, Facebook, when they sponsor our event in Silicon Valley two years ago, the women that they should be supporting and the diversity that they need to bring into the the networks and actually we're looking forward to work also with Google so this is a continuous uh, fight and a continuous uh, uh, project that it, it, we need to be all part of, of it and actually work on on it together uh, maybe listening to all your discussions you know I have some comment to make I come from India and uh, from South India and uh, uh, we, I run an education uh, engineering institution, which is uh, having around 60% ladies. I mean, only 40% are, uh, are the, the male. So I think there is a, a, a total difference in uh, perception of engineering in our place. And excepting for mechanical engineering, all other branches, uh, uh, surprisingly, uh, computer science, also electronics and uh, communication, all these branches are, uh, I mean, ladies are, uh, are in majority. So I was, if you want a solution perhaps uh, for this problem, 
which is typical to Europe uh, or this place. I mean, you may have some clue from our place. Uh, we don't have more time. If uh, someone wants to ask something, we are going to stay outside and you can come and speak with us. Yeah. I think that we can hear you. Yes. I, I would like to thank thanks again for this awesome panel. Uh, you are very uh, strong women, and thanks, and Almo, <laughs> <laughs> to represent the men in, in, the, in this community. I love the idea that we have to work on, and think about people, not, uh, not uh, women and men. We are all, all, we need all work together to change the world and we are starting to, to do that to do that. And thanks again. Thanks for all the attendance and now we have a lunch. Uh, it's time to break. Uh, please thank you. Thank you.